Guys, I've made a very difficult decision today and I've decided to quit YouTube. I'm resigning from the channel. I hope you enjoyed the run. We started by wanting to dispel bleach misconceptions. I think that we did a pretty good job, but it's time to call it a wrap. But before I leave, I have one final surprise for all of you. I'm not kidding, but I've got exclusive access to the sequel chapter to No Breeds From Hell. Rest assured, this is from the man himself, Tight Kubo. This is because I've been a member of Club Outside ever since it launched a couple of years ago, and because I know somebody who knows Kubo, I've had a chance to gain some exclusive preview material that not even James Hansen has seen. So before I abandon this YouTube channel, here is my parting gift to all of you. story continues from where we had left off in the No Breeds From Hell one-shot chapter which released almost three years ago. The sequel is titled No Helen Breeds Hell Chapter Number 2. After the shocking revelations of the previous chapter, all of the Shinigami were left deeply disturbed. They had just discovered that their allies, whom they had believed had peacefully passed on and have now become a part of the Soul Society, had in fact been damned to hell. What made this reveal even more painful was the fact that their former allies had been sent to hell by their own hands. It was a lot of information to process, and as a result, all activities within the world of the living were immediately suspended. With all of the Shinigami gathering at the Soul Society in order to discuss their next course of action. However, Ichigo Kurosaki decided to return home in order to check up on his family and friends, as he had believed that they would be easy targets if a new threat from hell had appeared. He reaches home almost instantaneously, as he finds Orihime asleep in the living room, dozing off while watching TV just after finishing the laundry. He wakes her up and lets her know about everything that has just happened. While talking, they make a spine-chilling observation, as they sense that Kazui spiritual pressure, which normally is felt anywhere within Karakura Town, has suddenly vanished. Ichigo expands his Peskisa far beyond the reaches of Karakura Town, but he still cannot locate his son. Ichigo fears for the worst, thinking that somebody from Hell has kidnapped Kazui. He is unable to shake the feeling that his son's disappearance is somehow connected to what is going on in hell. Before he even has a chance to step outside, a loud scream rings through the home as Ichigo and Orihime rush to Kazui's room, only to find Kon's tattered body lying on the floor. Orihime quickly heals Kon with Santen Keshun and Ichigo asks him what had happened and if he has any idea about Kazui's whereabouts. All Kon could say was that they were too strong. I could couldn't protect Kazumi, please. Forgive me, Ichigo. Before he collapses to the ground. This pretty much confirms Ichigo's suspicions as he places Khan within his robe before he calls Chad and Uryu in order to fill them in on the situation. As he picks up his phone, he sees an incoming video call from Rukia. Ichigo picks up the call immediately, but after a brief glance, him and Orihime realize that something is wrong. As Rukia's face is covered in bloody cuts and she seems to be lying on the floor, she tells them that they need their help as the Soul Society has been infiltrated by the citizens of Hell quite a long time ago, and they have been waiting, biding their time, in order to launch an attack against the Soul Society. She adds a very shocking revelation, stating that they have been betrayed by someone that they had never expected. As Rukia speaks to Ichigo, his mind goes back to Zyle Oporo's words, as he states, Hell has always been close to them. Ichigo realizes that this is what he must have meant. Before Ichigo can offer any words of support to her, a Zanpakuto suddenly pierces through Rukia's head, killing her instantly. Ichigo hears a malevolent laughter as a hand reaches for the phone. The phone rises to reveal a painfully familiar face, one that had helped Ichigo when he was merely a Ryoka within the Soul Society. We see none other than Hanataro Yamada smiling at Ichigo, as he reveals himself to be the true culprit behind everything that has been going on. Hanataro reveals that he was the creator of Hell, and that the time has finally come for the world to fear his power once again. However, as he was speaking, Ichigo hears a weak but familiar voice in the background saying, Please 
Have mercy, Lord Hanatero. Hanatero laughs and walks towards the source of this voice. He flips the camera around, revealing that it is none other than the once great Sosuke Aizen. Aizen is in a very pitiful state as he has lost all of his limbs and he is in a state that is similar to the Soul King. He lays face down and he barely can get up due to the weight of Hanatero's spiritual pressure. Ichigo was shocked to see this and he shouts at Aizen not to give up, but Hanatero laughs and steps on Aizen's head. He he then reveals that he had hidden his true power from everyone by concealing it within his Zanpakuto spirit called Hisagomaru. His Zanpakuto spirit now stands by his side. We learn that Hisagomaru was actually his robot assistant that he had created in order to hide his power. Now that Hanataro has revealed his true form, the time has come to return to his prime. His power was already so great that Ichigo could feel it while still in the world of the living. Ichigo is terrified to imagine what Hanataro's true power would be like if you were to meet him in person. Hanataro then sets up the phone on a tripod and moves quite some distance away from it. He stood side by side with his robot assistant and the two then make an odd stance. Orihime immediately recognizes this as the initial steps of the fusion dance as they fuse into Hanataro's true form, a hollow Shinigami Quincy Fullbringer human SCP Beyblade hybrid called none other than Robotaro. His power is so great that it shatters the boundary between the Soul Society and the world of the living. This makes it so that Ichigo can see him in the distance while also watching him on the video call. Incredibly, Kubo later reveals on Club Outside that the reason that Rukia's phone was able to withstand the power of Hanatro's fusion was because it had about 1% of a Nokia 3310 inside it. Urahara had made sure that this was a part of his contingency plan in order to protect the phone because he was expecting something like this to happen. Now, with Hanatro having activated his full power and having transformed into Robo Taro, he has now become a outer versal god who can solo the entirety of fiction with only 0.0000001% of his power, but Ichigo on the other hand has a trump card of his own. He calls Orihime and he passes her what appears to be a green pearl earring. He smiles at her as she smiles back and puts it on. The earring was actually a Patara earring which allows the two of them to fuse into their ultimate form Ichihime. Ichihime was also an outerversal god who could solo fiction with 0.0000001% of their power. Right before they begin to battle, Ichihime asks Robotaro what they plan to do with Kazui. Robotaro laughs and tells them that at the moment Kazui's attention span is being fried as he is chained up in a pocket dimension within hell and he's being shown an unlimited reel of TikToks. This is so that Kazui can lose his consciousness and turn into the greatest evil in all of existence, a being that Robotaro refers to as an influencer. Ichihime screams in rage and swears that they'll save Kazui before he can become an influencer, as the two overpowered, fusioned beings prepare to battle for the fate of the universe and their son, No Breeds From Hell, chapter number two ends. <laughs> Power unchained, in the dark they reign Ice is plan, I'm on Yoku Sam Creating beasts that can't be tamed From hollow to Shinigami like they switch lanes Numbers on their backs, not for games Through the Garganta, to the battlefield they aim In the dust of Hueco Mundo, where fears are born The Iron Car march with their strength grown Mass remove hearts of stone under ice and shadow, the loyalty shown Stark leads with a lazy grace, loneliness in his embrace Old Criola with a stoic face, in his heartless gaze A nihilistic abyss, Grim Joe's disdain for rules In his eyes a predator's gaze, Carabao defends her own Her fury like the sun's blaze Kaha negacion will have your mind blown A resurrection to release the sealed power With steel skin are on cars of no reason to cower In the art of war the espada are unsurpassed From the sands of Hueco Mundo Arranca rise With every battle their ranks rise Under the reverse moon Arranca And there's a battle cry For power, for survival Under the night sky Ichigo stands facing hollows with Zangetsu in his hands Under the swaying moon his resolve expands
Slaying hollows, defying destiny's demands. quaint town of Karakura, under the veil of night, a new legend was brewing. One far darker than any hollow or Shinigami battle. This tale wasn't about saving souls or protecting the innocent. No, this was the story of Ichigo Kurosaki, the beloved orange-haired hero turned into something sinister. A serial killer known as the Midnight Harvester. It all started on an ordinary evening, or so it seemed. Ichigo, who was burdened by the endless battles and the weight of the souls that he couldn't save, begins to unravel. He finds himself wandering the streets of Karakura at night and his Zanpakuto pulsating with a dark energy that he has never felt before. His blade begins to whisper to him, feeding his despair, transforming it into a twisted sense of purpose. Ichigo's first victim was a notorious gang leader, known for preying on the weak. Ichigo's blade found him in an alley, the perfect spot for a midnight harvest. It was quick, almost too easy, and as the life drained from the gang leader's eyes, Ichigo felt an exhilarating rush of power. This wasn't about justice or doing the right thing. It was about control, and Ichigo craved more of it. Night after night, the Midnight Harvester struck, each night deciding carefully who he was going to kill. Karakura Town was in a panic, torn between being afraid of the unknown killer, but being relieved that the criminals in the town were being killed. The Soul Society were alarmed by Ichigo's sudden disappearance, combined with the rise in unexplained deaths within the world of the living. And so Rukia and a team of Shinigami were sent to investigate. Upon Rukia discovering the truth, she was conflicted between her duty to the Soul Society and her loyalty to her friend Ichigo. She confronts Ichigo, pleading for him to stop, but Ichigo was consumed by darkness. He declared that he was the only justice that Karakura Town needed. So, a fierce battle ensued, with Ichigo overpowering Rukia, but finding himself unable to strike the finishing blow to her. During the climax of their battle, Orihime intervenes. Her love for Ichigo shines as brightly as a healing powers, and she reaches out to him. Orihime's words cut through the darkness that had taken hold of his soul. She tells him, This isn't you, Kurosaki-kun. Her tears shimmering with spiritual energy. She tells him, You are not the Harvester of Death, but a guardian of life. Her words filled with genuine love and belief in his true self begin to reach Ichigo, 
allowing him to break free from the dark influence of his Zanbakdo. Ashamed and horrified by his actions, Ichigo vows to disappear, to seek atonement for the lives that he has taken. However, the story doesn't end there. Rumors begin to circulate of a mysterious figure who roams the street at night not as a harbinger of death, but as a protector on his quest for redemption. And so the legend of the Midnight Harvester lived on. A short, beautiful story that teaches us not to be a serial killer douchebag. On the soft glow of the moonlit sky A lion plush with dreams so bold A spirit trapped within a cotton hole Comes his name, a soul remain with late Designed to spring Oh, Khan, in your stuffed mane Lies a tale of woe and glee you're a king without a throne Or kingdom to reign Laughing in the face of despair Hugging every woman in sight Khan wants a chance to be free A hero with a burden to bear With eyes for beauty, heart for love In his plushy interior a desire for love Chasing dreams he's unworthy of With the burning fire for perversion Yet beneath the comedic mask A warrior's soul resides This is the sad story of Khan the Mars soul A tale you won't forget when it's told Thrown away a carnival prize A knockoff lion with no love Con is no child's delight Hung by fate under starry skies A lion's roar Hidden under a cotton core Fighting hollows making leaps With his heart so full We forgot he was there So here's to calm a soul so big Trapped in a stuffed lion's body A cruel twist of fate Con, if you come to hear about this song Just know We haven't forgotten about the time you would take Behind the toilet by Rukia We love him, Con So, what did you guys think of the video? This is what I wanted. <gasps> ah! what? No. That some of that stuff is stiff as hell, dude. I don't wanna. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? Is he doing something? A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.